Hey there, everybody. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of Album Homework Assignment. We've got in the house today from the Hudson Valley Squares, Brave Words and Bloody Knuckles, and of course, Metal from the Inside, Sydney Taylor and Bryce from Bryce Talks Metal. Welcome, guys. How are you? Good. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Good. Nice. I, uh, you know, we first started talking about this, this series. I you two I instantly wanted to pair together because first of all you've never appeared on a show here together second of all you're both about the same age and so I think this would be kind of really cool to see what you guys would give each other uh as a listening assignment so uh we're gonna start we're gonna get ladies ladies go first Bryce so uh Sydney you're gonna you're gonna start us off today and uh, let us know what Bryce has assigned you for this listening experience here all right cool so Bryce gave me um skull fists uh, Chasing the Dream, um, which was an album, there, there you go, uh, released in 2014. And what's interesting is that I had heard of Skull Fist. I even listened to a couple songs, um, but I had never really kind of dived into them, which I'd been meaning to do. So I thought it was kind of interesting that he gave me this one. Um, because they're in the same realm sort of as like Enforcer and a lot of these like newer traditional heavy metal bands, which I really love Enforcer. So um, I had a feeling that I was going to really like them. Um, and I really did actually like this album a lot. And I think that it's funny because, you know, I do watch Bryce's videos too. And um, I'm sure you've seen the squares and everything. Like we kind of have similar, I guess, interests in like kind of like the eighties metal and, you know, like even if kind of more of the glammy stuff, which I don't want to say Skullfist is glammy because they're not, but they definitely have some of the nuances of that type of music. Um, so I kind of immediately was drawn to them for that. Um, the really melodic, uh, the production on this record was really fantastic. Um, and I had even, you know, in the process of listening, it also looked up, you know, comments on YouTube videos. And that seems to be kind of a running theme that a lot of people have is the production on this is actually fantastic. And it really is. Um, every single instrument is really, you know, evenly spaced out in the mix and you can kind of pick everything up, which is really great. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think that they do a really good job of combining the heavy the heavy metal you know like i said a little bit of heavier stuff maybe um like except and and you know racer x and the kind of those bands from the 80s and kind of combining it with i don't even know maybe, like, maybe i don't want to say motley crew but like this that kind of sound um and i love the fact that it's modern because i feel like you know seeing a lot of these bands from um they're from canada but you know a lot of these bands are kind of coming from sweden and different countries and we're kind of almost seeing like a a wave of like, <laughs> you know, heavy metal coming from over there and, you know, outside of the United States again. So it's really cool. I, I really like this album a lot. Um, I took some notes, um, some of my standout tracks was Hour to Live is probably my favorite off of this one. Um, what else did I put down? Uh, mean Street Rider was really great, Bad for Good. Um, I like the title track. It's just a really good album all around. I was, I was going into it thinking I would like it. So I wasn't like entirely shocked that I did. Um, but yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was a good one. Yeah, it's actually, I ranked that in my top 10 albums of all time. So I'm oh, glad wow. you like it. Oh yeah. Time. Wow. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I really love it. And um, I actually discovered it. I don't know if y'all have ever heard of that movie, Deathgasm. It's just some like stupid yeah. movie that was on Netflix. They had a couple songs in there a couple of years ago and I heard like, what the heck is that? And they've been my, like one of my favorite bands since. And yeah, you hit it right on the head. That was a great description. Yeah, I like I said, I loved Enfor like I love Enforcer. I've seen them. I've gotten it. And so I know that I believe I'm not hundred percent like remembering names of people. Um, but I think that there was a crossover between the guitar player. Yeah, they're Southwest, right. Um, on the last tour for Enforcer, they had trouble getting people in the US because they're from Sweden. And um, Johnny Nesta, who was the longtime guitar player for Skullfist, right, yeah. like filled in on that tour. But he's he's out of Skullfist now. They just uh, okay. he just he, he just left the band a couple months ago now, actually. OK, but, yeah, I remember because I remember that I had seen I had seen Enforcer and I was looking up the members and I was like, oh, I knew that the guy was from Skullfist. But yeah, I mean, I, I think they're all kind of like the same realm. And it's mm -hmm. it's a cool it's a cool like little like niche because it's not it's not like glam metal and it's not like thrash metal. It's just like right it's mm -hmm. a good between. mix between and it's 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 cool so i liked it a lot yeah definitely i i'd say i usually when i describe them to people that don't know them i say it's like a blend of docking iron maiden and exciter yeah kind of like all together 
So really cool. And one more interesting thing, that song Mean Street Rider, I don't know if you noticed at the beginning, it's like him, it's like a sound of him crashing on a skateboard. Yeah. That's re- that's real. And he broke his neck. There's a video of it. Ooh, how he broke the singer. Uh, yeah. Zach Slaughter. He broke his neck. So they put it at the beginning. He was up touring again, like five months later, which is pretty impressive, but he's, he's a crazy wow. guy. He's really cool. Nothing like cheating death like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, Capturing it live. Wow. That's it crazy. is. Yeah, it's crazy. It's on YouTube. People can check that out, but it's, it's pretty wild. But if um, I remember correctly, Bryce, I think when you and I did a show together a couple months ago, uh, the other dude had left the band like that day and you were so I, bummed about it. You remember yeah, that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Sucks, but I've, yeah. I've been talking to Zach. He's been on a few of my videos and they, they got a new guy lined up and a new album coming that should be really good. So, cool. yeah. So Sydney, would you, would you buy it? Would you just stream it or occasionally, or would you forget it? I would buy it. I would buy it honestly. I I I liked the the sound and I liked like I said the whole kind of vibe. Um, you know, definitely I listened to it about twice through. Um, kind of keeping like as, as a first impression thing, but definitely kind of want to go back and and kind of listen to it again and listen to some of their other stuff too. So I'd buy it. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. All right, cool. Bryce. What was your assignment? All right. So uh, Sydney suggested a few albums to me at first that <laughs> I had I already knew and like a couple that I wasn't super crazy about, but then she suggested um, Shake the World by the band Black Swan, which is um, a super group that came to be last year. And I had known of them and just y'all know, you know, it's hard to listen to everything. There's a million things. So I was aware of the group and it's got a lot of really great members that I love, you know, Jeff Pilsen on bass, Red Beach, who is one of my favorite guitar players ever. I've seen Winger twice this year and just love his playing. Um, Robin McCauley, it was kind of like, his big comeback kind of, you know, he hasn't done a ton over the last uh, recent years. And a guy named Matt Starr on the drums, who is the guy I was least familiar with, but he's drummed with like Ace Fraley and Mr. Big and some, uh, some others. But so I think uh, Red Beach and Jeff Pilsen, you know, they've got chemistry from the past because they were both in docking together on a race of slate, um, which is a really good album that came out in 1999. So, you know, they're kind of familiar with each other and Coming to be, I think um, I read that the Frontiers, because it came out through Frontiers Records, which is a lot of these like older glam band type type bands are coming out through that now. Um, the guy that runs that was talking to Jeff about possibly getting something together with Robin. And um, I think Jeff and Reb had, you know, done some jamming together because Foreigner and Whitesnake had toured. So they were all kind of getting that together and it came to be, however, and um I think it's really good. Um, nice melodic hard rock, glam metal type, whatever you want to call it. You know, people get mad if you say glam, but whatever. Um, there's 11 songs on it. A lot of cool stuff. Uh, there's a few at times with these, uh, when like the older bands get together, I think some of the like choruses and stuff can be a little generic. So there's a few, th- a few songs I don't really care for, such as looking at this, you know, make it, uh, not make it there, make it there's one of the better ballads, but Divided United, I think was kind of a meh like ballad and big disaster which was actually one of the bigger songs on the album i didn't really care for too much but the opener shake the world really fast energetic um great riff typical red beach riff and his soloing you know he's got that great finger tapping style which i love and uh robin he's in his late 60s it's amazing to me how some of these guys can hold up that well over the years like his voice and reb's guitar playing co- like complement each other perfectly uh both really melodic and as i said it's ridiculous how some of these guys can still uh, still sing like that. His voice still sounds amazing. But um, Johnny Came Marching is a pretty cool song. Got some relevant uh, lyrics about war, stuff like that. Um, another favorite on here I wrote down, She's On To Us, is easily my favorite song on this album. Heavy, bluesy, kind of dark. Uh, probably the heaviest song on the album. But uh, overall, really solid. I'd probably give it a 7.5 out of 10. I would buy it. Um, probably wouldn't spend more than like 20 bucks on it. But, you know... 7.5 out of 10, really solid album. I'm not sure if they're going to do more in the future, but I definitely would be looking forward to it if they were going to do anything else. And um, yeah, good, solid album. Yeah. Let's say if, if you're going to buy it, buy it soon because these Frontiers releases, wow. for whatever reason, go out of print really quickly. Yeah. yeah. It's really. crazy. They, they only like make like a really limited amount of stock mm. and then it's like, boom, over. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, I thought that that was, that was a pretty spot on description. I mean, uh, I totally agree with Robin McCauley. I mean, that's kind of what Greek. 
He's a freak of nature. It's man. it's insane. Like that's really hearing that album really made me go back and start to love the stuff he did, like the Macaulay Shanker group stuff. Like mm-hmm. I know that that's I get shit all the time for it because it's like you know it's not Michael Shanker's best thing, whatever. But I mean, I that's probably my favorite era of like Michael Shanker, um, like that time period and his voice really made me go back and revisit that. And he's just insane. Like if you see the live videos, which I'm sure the both of you have or whatever, like it's, it's mind blowing. He sounds like he did 30 years ago. It's crazy. Yeah. And I, I've seen him with uh, Michael Schenker fest in recent years. And yeah. you know, that's when he, you know, Schenker brings out all the old singers, Macaulay above and beyond is, is so much better formed than, you know, I mean, I love Graham Bonnet, uh, you know, and Gary Barton to an extent, but I mean, <laughs> Robin is just, he, he's still in a, a very elite league as far as the vocal prowess goes. I, it, you know, we're talking Glenn Hughes territory here. Yeah. I mean, these guys are like almost 70 and they sound just as good as ever. And I will say, Sydney, for people who shit on those Macaulay Shanker albums, you know, Michael has got a ton of albums that he's released as the Michael Shanker group or Shanker Fest right. or Temple rock whatever blah 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 right there's all all these albums if you look at all of them over all these years since the early 80s yeah the first three are always going to be everybody's favorites but those macaulay shanker albums are right behind them there there are no there there are no michael shanker album post uh what is it um what's the last was the self-title was the last one that they did together i think yeah they were the three albums anyway all of those other albums that he's done since that last Macaulay Shanker album, all of them, none of them are better than those three Macaulay Shanker albums. So yeah. personally, I think they're great. They're fantastic. Are they more melodic and a little more commercial sounding than the first three? Sure. But that's what everybody was doing at the time. So, yeah. but I think there's great songs, great playing, great singing. Uh, so I, I love those three. So whenever anybody like talks down about the, the Macaulay Shanker stuff, I'm like, come on, man. It's like, it's, it's those albums are so much better than anything he's ever done since. And, and he's done some good stuff, yeah. but uh, you know, Shanker, whatever he touched from his, the, that first Scorpions album all through UFO and up until probably like the early nineties is pretty stellar in my opinion. He's done some really good stuff afterwards as well, but nothing quite as solid as I think that whole, piece of his catalog that in covered in those years so my opinion though yeah so. no I mean I completely agree I mean I I mean I personally love a lot of melodic stuff that's no surprise to a lot of people yeah. who've watched me um so like I just normally kind of gravitated towards those because it's just kind of what I was into I'm really into like the the glam metal stuff so I mean that was kind of the vibe um but they are uh kind of going back to Black Swan I know that they are doing a second record um I I'm correct. I know I heard about it a couple months ago. It's either finished. I think they are either finished writing or starting recording or something. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that because that's like been one of my favorite releases yeah. that Frontiers has done in a while. I was going to say one more thing. The album by Black Swan really reminded me a bit of uh, the album I Tie by 220 Volt, which was their 1988 album. I don't know if yeah. y'all know that one, but yeah. really amazing Swedish melodic hard rock. So it kind of reminded me of that, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. glad you liked it. I, I figured you would because I know yeah. the kind of music you like, but yeah, um, yeah I'm glad you do. I'm glad yeah, you like it. Yeah. Like what they do if they do put out another album. So yeah. I, I, I like the album as well. I'm, I'm a fan. I, I, I picked it up. You know, I reviewed it on the, the download and I went and bought the CD and uh, it's quite good. But again, I, I like everybody in that band and I think it just made sense. And it'd be interesting because now, you know, there's like it's like kind of like a weird time for all of them because, you know, White Snake is nearing the end. So you figure yeah. there's going to be there's this the White Snake tour. Will they do another album? I don't know what's going to happen with that. Reb is always doing the winger thing on the side, right? That's that's always going to be there. Uh, Macaulay just did the solo album. So yeah. I think the, the Shanker thing is, you know, I, I get this feeling that Shanker is going to kind of move in other directions now. Uh, all of a sudden he's got this, you know, him and Ronnie Romero are like and working together. So we'll see what happens with there. So these guys might all have some more free time to do this if that's what they wanted to do. And I'm sure Frontiers is, is going to pony up the bucks to say, you know, because that, that's what they do. They throw money at all these, you know, 80s and 90s and 70s musicians and say, hey, let's do these projects, start these new bands and see what really clicks. Right. So. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm mostly interested to see only because I know that Jeff Pilsen is just such a weird schedule because he's always touring with Foreigner. Um, yeah. And it was one of those funny things is that, yeah, it was Frontiers because Jeff does a lot of production stuff for them. Um, and he originally wasn't supposed to be in Black Swan. And Robin McCauley said that he would only do it if Jeff Pilsen played yeah. bass. 
So it's one of those things where I'm curious to see, cause I'd love to, um, I'd love to see them do a couple of shows together. Cause that's, that's another thing with the frontiers projects is a lot of them are just projects. And They're just never projects. Yep. Yeah get to see them live um like i i've talked about it about a million times on on sea of tranquility the dirty shirley record they've never even met each other like george lynch and dino dino delusic have never even met each other um let alone played a show together so it's stuff like that where i'm like i'm curious to see if they will um especially because i know jeff is so busy all the time but i'd love to see them do a couple of shows and just you know see what some of those songs sound like live yeah, you know, it's tough right now. Well, well, it's tough right now because of COVID, oh, right? But yeah. even even before COVID or hopefully after it, uh, you know, here in this country, it's just hard to draw for, for you know, projects or new bands yes. like this, even though they're all name, you know, musicians and, and, and rock stars or what have you, to go and tour here and draw anywhere. That's, you know, I know Frontiers used to do these like little festival things years ago. I don't know if they still do that, yeah. but uh, I mean, it'd be great if Frontiers would do like something like that here in the States where you pick like maybe three cities and you do like an all day festival and you bring a Black Swan, you bring, you know, all, I mean, they've got so many of these other bands on that, on that roster that they could do that with like a, a full day festival where they all get to play like an hour set and get to actually go on stage together which because otherwise we're never going to see right so yeah who knows yeah we'll see time will tell right so frontiers folks if you're watching uh we we would be into that get it together (laughs) (laughs) so here we go we got uh we got two we got two buy it's today so uh two thumbs up or four thumbs up i should say and i'll add my two as well because i like all of these records so uh so very cool so i want to thank uh bryce and sydney for uh taking part in this little homework assignment here and uh, we've got a cool one coming up next week so stay tuned for chris allo and lewis nasser they've both been given their assignments Uh, i and this, this particular one, I know what they both are, and I'm curious to see what their uh, what their opinions are on both of them. So uh, stay tuned for that next week. And uh, Bryce and Sydney, what's going on on your uh, on your various uh, media outlets and things? You go, Bryce. Uh... Uh, yeah, for my YouTube channel, just the same old, same old, pretty much. I did just put out a top 100 metal bands. If anybody wants to go spend an hour watching me just talk about bands I like, y'all can do that. Um, other than that, just typical rankings, top tens, nothing that. Uh, super crazy but go dolphins got the patriots today uh opening week so yeah thanks again for having me on pete you got it and props for that born again album always sitting over your uh, oh yeah shoulder there that's you know <laughs> Cindy, how are you um kind of same old same old um i have taken a couple weeks off the podcast just because i'm editing this um episode with kathy and kelly Rhodes still because i'm determined to make it perfect because it's very important to me um, that's coming in either the next week or two um and other than that kind of the same same old same old gonna be on hudson valley squares all that fun stuff um and some new stuff coming to brave words too so you can find cool. me there awesome aren't you happy that you're still gonna be able to talk about joel and turner on monday night oh see absolutely. how that worked out see <laughs> i was gonna be so upset i, was I know like, you were <laughs> <laughs> i could not miss talking about sleeves and masters because i i just love that album so much so i'm really excited <laughs> there you go cool yeah and it's it's it just made sense in the end to just kind of postpone the show and then yeah. i thought about it, i'm like i'm sure sydney is pretty happy oh, about this yeah. i was <laughs> <laughs> so stay tuned for that on monday night everybody uh, hudson valley square is live well not live but uh this coming monday where the topic is uh the two one-off deep purple lineups we've got the tommy bolin album come taste the band and then the joel and turner album slaves and masters we're going to talk about and dissect them which ones we like which ones we don't what we like about what we don't like about them so stay tuned for that uh, we'll also have uh, martin popoff and lewis nasser on that particular episode bryce you want to join um tomorrow for deep purple no monday night oh oh monday night uh maybe maybe okay i'll have to go back through those albums i'm not sure well you let me know if you if you have time to listen to them and you have something to say let me know you're you're more than welcome cool thanks for the invite you got it you got it so uh visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org we're on facebook we're on twitter of course we're here on youtube all the damn time do i ever get tired of saying that no it's just just kind (laughs) of happens i don't have to think about it so uh for sydney and bryce i am pete Uh, thanks for watching everybody again tune in next sunday for another edition of album homework assignment and uh, we'll see you then take care bye-bye